I think I'm in frame. If not, then you just may be talking to an off-centered Ella Travis because I'm too lazy to get up and fix it. So today we are going to be talking about the Collinwood School Fire, otherwise known as the Lakeview School Fire. Collinwood was a small community of about 8,000 people located just outside of Cleveland, Ohio. The Lakeview School, built in 1901, was a three-story wood building with an outer brick shell. It was in a quiet part of the neighborhood and the majority of the students who went to that school lived within walking distance of the building. On March 4th, 1908, there were between 310 and 325 students in attendance. In the basement, the steam pipes running under the first floor became dangerously overheated. It would be 30 minutes before the only thing left standing of the school was the outer brick shell. After the children were settled into the classrooms, Fritz Herter, one of the school's custodians, described what happened next. I was sweeping the basement when I looked up and saw a whisk of smoke curling out from beneath the front stairway. I ran to the fire alarm and pulled the gong that sounded the alarm throughout the building. Then I ran to the front doors and then towards the rear doors. He said that he tried to open the front door and the back door to help the fire kind of go out. But as we know, oxygen supplies fire. So that only made it worse. And when he realized that, he closed the door again and it told the classroom to immediately get out of the building. He said, quote, I cannot remember what happened next, except that I saw the flames shooting all about and the little children running through them screaming. Some fell at the rear entrance and others stumbled over them. I saw my own little Helena, his other daughter, among them. I tried to pull her out but the flames drove me back. I had to leave my little child to die. When the fire alarm rang, the teachers and the children assumed that it was just a drill. No one was overly excited as they fell into a single file line like they normally did during a fire drill. They headed towards a stairway that was leading towards the main doors on the first floor. At first, they went in in an orderly fashion until the children at the front of the line saw the flames and it quickly turned into utter chaos as most of the children either ran into the flames in an effort to get through them or they ran back upstairs to try and find another way out. Catherine Hall, who was a teacher at the school, she was in her mid-20s at the time. She had been teaching since she was 18. She was nearly six feet tall and was a commanding presence in the school, but she was also a very caring person. When her students realized that it was a real fire and not just a drill, she did her best to calm her students down as they made their way to the front staircase. The students saw that their way was blocked by fire and they quickly ran to the stairs leading to the rear exit of the building. By the time they got to the exit, the other staircase was packed with children and it was so tightly packed that the children tried to climb over the pile of children but that only resulted in them becoming trapped. Catherine spent her last few minutes alive trying to pull children away from the pile so they could be saved. At some point, she fell down and she was trampled to death by the children trying to get away. The fire started in the basement just under the staircase leading to the front doors. During the fire drills, students were instructed to go directly to the front door but were never trained to seek another exit if that exit was blocked. When the students reached the front door and they saw it was already up in flames, they all rushed quickly to go through the flames, but it became so tightly packed that no one could move to get to the doors, which opened inward instead of the other way, so no one from the outside could have opened them either. Children arriving at the door saw this and from that moment on, there was really no hope for them. After the fire alarm was sounded, the chief of police, Charles McElrath, was one of the first people to arrive on the scene. He started directing volunteers and firefighters as well as the public who were watching this whole thing happen. He was trying to control them to try and keep things going as well as they could so they could put this fire out. Within minutes, hundreds of parents and family members who heard of the fire arrived at the school. George Getzian, I'm not pronouncing that right, who was watching from the street ran to the back door with a police officer. They got them open, but they were immediately forced back by the flames. They tried to get the front doors open as well, but they were not budging. Walter Kelly, the mother of two students who went to this school, was the first parent to reach the building. 
They also tried to get the front doors open, but nothing happened. They were able to grab a brick and break the window and save a few children that way before the flames became too intense. Eventually, the rear doors collapsed from the weight of the children, exposing the real reason the doors could not be opened. There was a pile of children packed six feet tall, and it was so tightly packed that none of the children could move. The custodian who sounded the alarm was still in the building, and he was literally throwing children out the window as he was going because that was the only way that he could have saved them. Even though his skin was being stained black by the flames and the soot, he continued pulling as many children as he could out of the pile until the heat was too much for him and he had to get out of there. As the flames got closer and closer to the children, rescuers tried everything they could to get the kids out of there, but none of them could be saved. The heat drove the adults away and they were forced to watch helplessly as a lot of those children were being burned alive. Like I said earlier, the police chief had three children trapped inside the school. There was seven-year-old Benson and nine-year-old Viola, whose hair had been burned off when he saw her. Benson and Viola made it out, but his oldest son, 10-year-old Hugh, did not make it out. Several witnesses recall Hugh as helping them get out of the building rather than saving himself. When he ran back in the hallways, he got ate up by the flames and he died inside the building. When the front doors finally opened, people saw another pile of children that were so tightly packed no one could escape. This time around, most of the children were already dead. One of the parents saw his daughter in the fire and she was still alive but they couldn't get her out. They had to leave her there and the father, he continued to pull until he physically could not continue. The Collinwood Fire Department was made up entirely of volunteers, many of whom were quite inexperienced. They had a difficult time getting anything in order and they were very, very slow in even getting to the property. When they got there, they realized that this fire was way too big for them to fight. They were left basically to just try and let the fire go out on its own because the farthest that their water hoses would reach is the first and maybe the second floor. After the building was done burning, the only thing left of it was the outer stone structure. The removal of the victims from this fire were done by the fire department, and there were 175 total bodies recovered, 19 of whom were burned beyond recognition. Many of the bodies were so badly burned that they fell to pieces as they were pulling them out, making them even harder to identify. Catherine Weiler's body was never found. And obviously in today's world, we knew the cause of the fire. It was the overheating of the furnace. But back then, they needed to find someone or something to blame for this. And rumors started going around about that custodian who originally rang the fire bell. People even showed up to his house and formed a crowd out. But when three little caskets containing the bodies of three of his children who died in the fire, they quickly stopped blaming him. And Walter, Helena, and Ida Herder, the kids who died in the fire, they were found together on the second floor. They were all huddled together in their last moments. A new school was completed in 1912, and that is the one that you see today. And it's across from where the original fire happened. In the lot where the old school stood is a memorial garden with a stone. And each stone, there's 175 of them, each contain the name of a victim from the fire. I will see you guys next week for a brand new video. Make sure to subscribe and come back every Tuesday for some new true crime content. Thank you.